big reason why some travel videos look great and others don't is actually not your camera, fancy color grading or something like that. They do help, but you can get away with pretty cheap gear today. The main reason is actually lighting and things like framing and composition, which usually come for free. So in this video I show you how to use light to make your travel videos look better. There are six to seven lighting scenarios that you encounter why you should travel videos. It's important to know how to make the best out of each to get the best shots. So let's get into it. Let's start with the basics before we talk about the specific situations and basically what you always want to achieve with your lighting is to give depth to the image because if you think about it, usually when you look at the screen you have a two-dimensional image, right? But what you want is that your image appears to be three-dimensional without having to wear some 3D glasses or something like that. And lighting is the way how you achieve that in your videos and photos. And to be more specific there, it's not just about the light, it's mainly about shadows because alternating shadows and highlights is essentially what gives your image depth, what makes it appear to be three-dimensional. And the two techniques that you use to achieve that is at first side lighting and backlighting. You probably heard about those techniques before when it comes to studio lighting, but obviously when you travel, you don't have control over your light. You usually only have the sun as your light source and you can't change the position of the light then obviously, we're not God. So you can't influence the light, but what you can influence is the position of your camera to the light. That leads us to the two techniques. So at first, backlighting essentially means that your light source, the sun or whatever it is outside, is somewhere behind your subject. It mustn't be perfectly behind the subject. It can be anywhere within that 180 degree angle. And side lighting is essentially what I'm doing right now. I'm sitting in the shade here and the light is coming from the side here, as you can see. So you see that this side of my face is a bit brighter. Also have a little bit of light here, which gives it a bit more depth. It's called Rembrandt lighting essentially, because you see a bit more light here on the right side of my face right now. And then you see that here is a bit of shadow. The shadow is not that strong right now because we have a lot of air pollution here right now. It's the same as shooting on cloudy days that the light is quite flat and soft. So you get, so you don't get that harsh shadows, which is also a good thing because too harsh shadows can also be bad sometimes. And the reason why backlighting works great is at first that you get this rim light effect around your body. You can see that here. Looks pretty cool and that separates your body from the background because rim light essentially is a bit like a white line around your subject and especially if you have darker backgrounds that really separates your subject and therefore gives the shot more depth. But backlighting can also cause smooth gradation around your subject, especially if you move your camera a bit in the vertical X or if the light source comes more from the side but still from the back of your subject like the opposite side of your camera because then it causes some nice gradation from the highlights to the shadows and that's usually a pretty beautiful effect. Anyway, let's also talk about the specific situations now. So let's start with our first two conditions. That's cloudy and sunny weather during daylight hours, especially noontime. And while those conditions might look pretty different, like sunlight is pretty harsh, dark shadows, but also bright highlights, and cloudy weather is rather soft, pretty similar to as it is right now. The way how you get the best shots during those conditions is essentially the same, and that's why I show them together here now. Now you see I'm doing it wrong right now. The light's just coming from the top. It like creates some shadows around my eyes and my face overall looks relatively flat. It's definitely not a nice shot, but I also want to show you how easy it is to solve that by simply changing your position. So right now you see it's pretty bad, but if I just go two meters to the side here, just got my exposure right, and as you can see, it looks a lot better because I moved two meters to the side where we have shade, I have a roof over my head right now, and that means that I made the light, the natural light, directional, because now it's coming from the side and slightly in front of me, so we get the side lighting effect again. Left side, Rembrandt lighting, and also shade again. And that's the simple technique that you can always use when you're outside. It doesn't matter if it's cloudy or sunny over the day. You can simply go somewhere in the shade so the light is directional or becomes directional. It comes only from one side and it looks a lot better. Of course, what's also important to mention here is that if you go too far into the shade, let's say I'm going here right now and then the sun would only come from the front of my face, you see that doesn't look good again because then there's no shade. Now my face is equally lit. So you always want to stand somewhat like that here so that the light comes from one side, not from the other, or at least not so much from the other so that you have shade. That always looks better. 
So when you shoot videos throughout the day, it doesn't matter if it's cloudy or sunny, always look for where you can go into the shade and get better shots there because then the light becomes directional. So if you have the option to get into the shade, always do that. It gives you the best results, but you can't always do that. And that's why it's the second technique, essentially backlighting. And to use backlighting throughout daylight hours, simply look where the sun actually is, like the exact position, because usually the sun is not perfectly above your head or of your subject, but it's usually somewhere a slight angle and by filming in a way that the sun essentially shines from behind your subject but without actually having the sun in the shot so the background is a bit brighter gives you this nice rim light effect and that essentially gives you good shots even during daylight hours for example i got some shots from motorbike drivers here in hanoi and there you can see that pretty good that's an interesting example here now the sun is pretty high up but as you can see it comes from an angle so you see i have rim light around my face now we get the same effect while I'm filming the street. Like all the motorbike riders here have that rim light effect just because the sun shines from a slight angle at least. So even here throughout the day you can totally use the open light in a slight angle to get this effect and it looks so much better as if I would shoot in this direction now. You can see it directly like now it doesn't look that good. Could probably also stand somewhat like that. It's still shadow side but coming from the side more instead of being completely behind me. Also makes it nice and dynamic. So actually two simple techniques throughout the day to get the best shots, either go in the shade to make your light directional or ensure that it comes somewhat from the back of your subject to get that rim light effect. Let's come to lighting in hotel rooms. And as you can see, the first technique that you can use in hotel rooms always is to get close to a window. The room that I'm in right now actually sucks. It's pretty small, you will see that in a moment. And I actually did not expect that this shot right now would look as good as it looks. I'm actually quite surprised, but yeah, this is the first technique. Just get very close to a window. As you can see, you automatically have side lighting. And that's why another tip that I can give you is to select your hotel rooms based on the windows. You generally want to have big windows and you ideally want to have wide and slightly transparent curtains in front of the windows so that the curtains let a little bit of light through, but it softens the light so that it looks similar to right now. That's actually the reason why when I vlog you see me quite often staying in hotel rooms that have white curtains in front because I know that makes shooting videos regarding lighting a lot easier but the problem again is now that I have to stand close to the window it's not always perfect it's good for lighting but obviously you also want to show a bit of the room sometimes it's oftentimes also not the best angle so let's get some other ones here so now in a position that I think many people would prefer for travel because you can see the hotel room behind me it feels a little bit more personal but the thing is, you see the left side of my face now is way too dark. The reason is simply that now the light coming from the window only lights up the right side of my face, but we don't have that Rembrandt lighting effect anymore that we had before where the light also hits the other side of the face. And that's why I actually don't like this shot that much. And that's usually the problem in hotel rooms. You oftentimes only have window light, the other lights are kind of are not usable to get proper shots. And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes into play. Zion just released a new light, the Modus X60, which I find is a super nice light because you see how small that is. Like here, that's my hand, that's the light and it has 60 watts. And it's not only small, it's also light. I don't know the actual spec right now, but it feels like a bit more than a GoPro. Like this is super light. That's also why I brought this on this trip now. And the beauty of this light is also that it's USB-C powered so you can just use your MacBook charger whatever charger you have with you and connect it to that you don't have to bring one of those huge plugs that many lights come with but I think that's important because many reviewers of other lights actually show you the light and look oh this is small and everything but then it comes with those huge power bricks and you can't actually use it for travel but that's not happening with this light so let me show you how to use it to get better lighting in hotel rooms because there's a little trick that you have to use because the light source is a bit smaller as on other lights so that's the shot that I quickly set up using the Zion Modus X60 light and as you can see from the lighting perspective it looks pretty good of course as mentioned before it's not the perfect room for that you can see that edge from the bathroom here not that nice but we can't change it in this hotel room but the tip that I wanted to give you regarding those small lights is that instead of putting a pointing it directly on your face like I'm doing now, which looks kind of strange, it's a bit too harsh. You should point it 
towards a white wall or anything else that's white because that bounces the light back on your face and therefore the light is a lot softer as if you would put it directly on your face. That's a mistake that many people do. And yeah, as you can see, that looks a lot better as if I would turn the light around. Even if I adjust my exposure now to make it somewhat look good, you see now we have pretty strong shadows here. It's not that soft, not that nice looking. So you see, I'm bouncing that back onto the wall. It looks a lot softer here. We don't have those harsh shadows a lot better overall. And that's why having a small light like that one with you actually makes such a big difference. You can set up something like that in pretty much every hotel room. And what's also important here is that it has 60 watts. Like there are lots of like 20, 30 watt lights that are even smaller, but they're oftentimes not powerful enough to bounce back from the wall properly and give you enough light on your face. I actually lived pretty much only in hotel rooms and Airbnbs for about four years and recording my Aero was always a challenge during those times you can actually see it in a lot of shots there just because of the lighting so back in those days i wish i had such light with me but lights like that were not available during that time so you have it a lot better today i will leave a link to this light in the description below in my opinion it's a must have when you travel and you want to record a lot of videos so, so much for shooting videos in your hotel room, but now we're in a cafe here and that leads us to the next situation that you're shooting in when making travel videos, that's cafes, restaurants, etc. And the exact same rules count as in your hotel room. Ideally, you sit somewhere close to a window because there everything looks better. So right now I'm not sitting close to a window and as you can see, it looks pretty flat here. Not nice at all. Even if I maybe walk around here a little bit, you can see I'm quite far away from the windows. It's not beautiful, so let's sit down close to a window. And now again, I'm sitting close to a window, actually a pretty big one right now, so pretty nice soft light over my face. And as you can see, it instantly looks a lot better. So if you have big windows, that's a plus, but even small windows work, you just have to go a bit closer to the windows. And by the way, this principle does not only count for humans, but also for objects like that coffee here, the moment you put it close to a window or any other light source, it looks a lot better. But I prefer windows because it makes white balancing a bit easier. Practical lights are oftentimes a bit too warm, sometimes also cold, and that makes it complicated. Our next light condition is golden hour. It's also my favorite because it's pretty hard not to get good shots during those times. And that's the hour after sunrise or the hour before sunset. And there the sun obviously is quite low. So you have a nice backlighting effect or side lighting depending on how you shoot all the time. And the light is also a bit warmer, what gives really nice colors in your shots. That's why I generally get up early and shoot at sunrise. So if you want to have the very best looking footage for your travel videos, just go on more for sunrise and sunset get up early and you will get the best shots and sunrise also leads us directly to the next condition which is blue hour that's the hour before sunrise and as the name suggests there you get a lot of blue light now i don't shoot much during those hours simply because you have to get up that early while i get up a lot for sunrise blue hour is oftentimes the time where i just want to sleep anyway if you encounter blue hour maybe if you go hiking in the mountains or so it's important to know that it's always good to use practical lights during this hour. Practical lights can be any light that you use throughout your day. It could be the light of your phone, it could be a flashlight, it could be the lights from your car or whatever you want. And the reason why it looks so good is simply that those lights are usually warm and that creates a strong color contrast to the blue light around you. So you get this natural orange and teal look. Also, don't forget to bring a fast lens, f1.8, f1.4, f1.2 or something like that, because it's generally quite dark during those times so you want to expose a bit brighter. And there's also a kind of seventh condition. This is in the night. And to be honest, I find it quite hard to give you concrete tips throughout, during the night because you oftentimes have many lights around you and they constantly vary also when it comes to white balancing, etc. That's why it's complicated, but generally you get the same basic rules that you have to use to get the best shots there. Either place the light source behind your subject or let it come somewhat from the side. What I usually do during the night is that I simply walk a bit more around my subject and see what direction or what position of my camera in regards to the subject would look the best, essentially creating backlighting and side lighting there. 
so now you should know how to use light properly in your travel videos to make them look more cinematic but of course there is the problem that things usually happen fast when you travel and you just have to capture for the story right so you don't always have the time to focus so much on lighting and that's why how i usually handle that is that whenever i see a shot that's somewhat important for the story or that just looks good for now or so that i want to have in there i just get the shot quickly even if the lighting is not perfect and then if i have some time after i got the shot initially i get more shots of it where i walk a little bit around the subject and i try to capture it from different angles to ensure that the lighting looks a bit better and sometimes also the framing to be a bit more aware of what's in the background etc and then later in post you can still choose and if you don't have the time then you at least have the main shot that's important to tell the story or to show something important of the experience of a certain place so don't get crazy over lighting and cinematics and yeah that's it for today definitely check out the new Modus X60 light. I could not believe my eyes when I got it out of the box like how small that light is and knowing already from Zion that the lights are pretty good. I, I couldn't wait for trying this light out and by the way I also reviewed the Modus X100 lights a few months ago and I used them in pretty much every video like basically every time you see b-roll in my videos some product b-roll shots or so that I got in my studio you can be sure that I used the X100 light there and Zion also brought out a new version of this light this is the Cinepeer X or something 100 light and that comes together with a, a battery and the main difference to the X100 light is that the battery is permanently attached and that design somehow makes the lights a lot cheaper because before buying that whole package together with the batteries seems like it was a bit too expensive for many people so there they made it a little bit cheaper but to be honest I'm personally not a huge fan of that design I think having the battery separated is a bit better because then you can also travel with those lights so I would personally rather get the X100 if you don't travel much if you use it more at home or in your city or so if you travel a little bit but for actual travel like we were talking about in today's video definitely the x60 lights they are better but yeah if you want to have batteries permanently attached to your lights you use them regularly etc and you want to save a bit of money then using those cinepeer x100 lights versions is actually pretty good so i hope you learned something today if yes then please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next video bye time for my coffee now